Saka fadzai, ndu dzivoka shamani. Ndinotara shona ere. Ndinotara chishona chizere. Shwa shwa ere. Ndinotara chishona chizere chakawanda. Shona. Aya no mira mira. Ngotere kya ma YouTube ngotere. Shana, <laughs> and then I start. Pato <laughs> one. Oh no! But no, zero. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, welcome to the week where we've got a very special guest. We are reporting live from the Bid Change headquarters with none other than Comrade aspiring MP Fadzai Mahere. Fadzai, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Comrade Fatso. Thank you for having me. You're looking very funky. You're looking yeah. youthful today, huh? Youth vote thing. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. We'll get you the youth vote. <laughs> yeah. So, firstly, I think the question on everyone's minds, uh, what do you say to the allegations that you are bussing in innocent Arundel schoolgirls <laughs> to all your rallies? <laughs> Uh, well, it's I true. can it's say true. that I it's wish true. that allegation mm. were true. Mm. <laughs> I wish those 18-year-old Arundel girls would absolutely come and get involved. Um, you know, we do believe that, you know, young people are the future and everything that we're doing is for that generation. So Arundel girls, everyone from Mount Pleasant High, they know now, we really want high school kids involved in the campaign. And so really this is a call. The allegation unfortunately is not true because we don't yet own a bus. Mm -hmm. But the minute we do, rest assured, we're going to be busing those youthies in. Well, yeah, once you get into power, we know you'll get a bus. Like <laughs> Fingers crossed. So now what about the other allegations that when you get into power, you want to move parliament to Mount Pleasant? Oh, that would be great. Mm. I think Mount for your Pleasant, convenience. But what about? <laughs> <laughs> I think Mount Pleasant constituency is extremely beautiful. Mm. That's the first thing. Lots of tree-lined avenues. Um, it brings together all sorts of you know diverse groups. You know, you've got your students, you've got your businesses, you've got your residents, you've got your business owners. So I do think it would be a great place to you know get the legislative wheels moving. But obviously, you know. It is what it is. We're stuck in the CBD <laughs> with all its noise and pollution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully and, that will change too. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and and how do you respond to allegations and accusations that come at you uh, that you're splitting the opposition vote? I mean, <laughs> why don't you just join Ana Chamisa in the bullet train? So first and foremost, I'd like to make it really clear that we believe in a strong, united opposition. We don't want to split the vote at all. I think that is a little unambitious. We want to win mm -hmm. because we do believe in introducing a new style and culture of politics. Uh, you know, we, we do want to innovate and do things a little bit differently. But that doesn't mean we can't collaborate and coexist with, you know, Nelson Chamisa, who is a great friend of mine, colleague in the profession as well. So it's about, you know, bringing those different pieces together mm -hmm. because you know the woods would be very boring if only one kind of bird sang so when you've got like-minded people let's come together let's bring our respective fortes to the table and let's push the the Zimbabwean dream forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you heard her saying that basically she's a bird and Nelson Chamisa's a bird and maybe those birds will flock together someday you heard it here first birds of a feather if you found professor Jonathan Moyo wherever he's hiding right now what would you say to him I would say to him, karma is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Did you use the hashtag this flag movement to make a name for yourself just so you could <laughs> run for office? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, I think I remember the time, 2016, my involvement was accidental at first. Mm -hmm. I was just there to throw in my legal opinion, but you know, a lot of what Pastor East said resonated mm -hmm. so strongly with me. And then I found myself in, you know, a position I never thought I'd be, as I said at the launch of the campaign. And really, you know, the hope at the time was that the movement would, you know, grow into something big and powerful, which it did, just not in the way that we expected. And so it really sowed a very special seed in me. Mm -hmm. um, but it was never the plan to run for office. If, you had to ask anyone who knew me at the time, I said, absolutely not, I want to become a judge. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, you know, you learn lessons along the way, you learn, you know, what works and what doesn't work so well. And we find ourselves in, in this position. Um, and I remember being asked at the time, you know, if it's I, will you get into office? I was like, absolutely not. Will you get into politics? I was like, no, 
politics is not for us. We are those analysts, people who mm -hmm. say, no, do this, do that, <laughs> sitting behind a nice keyboard. Uh, so it was never the plan to run for office, but I, I'm really grateful for what this flag did for me because it did teach me a lot of lessons um, which I am using in this campaign about people, about how to connect with people, about how to deal with, you know, the internet, with trolls, mm -hmm. with all that sort of thing. So I wouldn't say I used it at all, no. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was capable of being used in that way. It was something big and beautiful and, you know, we're grateful for it. So it just happens that uh, that you're now running for office, we have yourself, uh, Evan Mawadire, running for <laughs> councillor, yeah, and a marshal <laughs> running for councillor, Henry <laughs> running for councillor, just, just a coincidence, huh? I think it's, it's purely, purely, purely a coincidence, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, as young people, we're a little bit disillusioned about the, the state of our politics, having had, you know, Mugabe in office for so long, so uninspiring. If we look at our surroundings, very uninspiring. Mm -hmm. We hate, you know, landing in Joburg and feeling awestruck by things that really should be basic. Mm -hmm. So either you can spend all your time complaining, sitting at a coffee shop, or you can, you know, really roll your sleeves up and get busy and, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Either or. Tuku or Mukanya? Tuku. Castle Lager or Sauvignon Blanc? <laughs> no, none of the above. Hmm. ED or Chamisa? I'll take that on advisement. Come back. Come back in a few months. Follow, when, I've, when I've seen their manifestos and their campaign. Follow her to the voting booth. You'll see which <laughs> You'll one she votes for. <laughs> Fatai, why did you choose the slogan, hashtag be the change? Why didn't you come up with the slogan like, you know, hashtag show me the money, hashtag show me the cash, hashtag give me the change? Huh? That's, a, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. I made it myself. <laughs> yeah. I also the asked reason, it myself. The reason we chose uh, the tagline or the hashtag be the change is because too often in our politics we relinquish our agency um, and our ability to, to take charge, to make decisions, get involved, to participate to the government mm -hmm. and those in power. Um, you know, after a year and a half or so of thinking, you know, we evolved to a place where we said, you know what, instead of moaning and complaining and saying this political party should do this, this political candidate should do that, mm -hmm. why don't we actually become that which we wish to see and become an exemplar for a style of politics that we find inspiring. We couldn't find hope, so we wanted to provide hope. Mm -hmm. We couldn't find engagement and innovation, so we provided innovation and, you know, hopefully inspiration. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't see enough technical competence and people speaking to, you know, constitutional and legal issues in, a, in an informed way. Mm -hmm. So we decided we'd bring that to the table. We didn't hear enough of people's daily stories coming out into the fore. You know, going to the marketplace at Pendena shops or going to, you know, Bond Street, Groombridge, knocking on someone's gate in Avondale and just hearing, look, what is your take? What do you want to see? Mm -hmm. What can we change? How can we come together as a community and try and do things differently? Are we going to plant trees? Are we going to do a book drive for the library? Are we going to fix the community hall? So really taking the power back to the people and saying that, look, if you want change, stop clamoring for it and asking the government to offer you change. Mm -hmm. Instead, become the change you wish to see. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you will attain a vaccination of the national attitude. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, that, that, that's exactly what inspired, I mean, your campaign inspired me to, to run. I don't know if you saw my campaign. I also launched <laughs> it la rude, last though. year. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, so I took that and I made it my own. And so, yeah. it, you know, my campaign was, you know, hashtag be the Futseke. Yeah, yeah, you know, no. Because you want to be the, yeah. the best Futseke that you can be. Right. And uh, running in Uzumba, Maramba, Pungwe, I thought was quite an easy district. Chance, so, 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 so what do you think of, of my chances in, in UMP in the upcoming <laughs> you know, elections? Anything is possible. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I tell everyone who's yeah. trying to run. Yeah. But on a serious note, flowing from that, um, they just a few words of encouragement that I would mm. give to anyone who's thinking about running, whether as an independent or within a political party. Uh, first of all, you have to have 
very deep clarity of thought mm -hmm. and conviction as to why you're doing it because it does get difficult you do you feel like stopping sometimes mm -hmm. and you have to ensure that you're internally driven and you strongly believe in the cause before setting out because when you start um, you know you almost have nothing no money <laughs> mm. no ground game no visibility and you really have to build and that takes time you have to be patient and you have to ensure that you don't stop I'd also encourage people to get a very strong team get mm. a network of people around you with the right sorts of abilities that will be able to drive your campaign you have to have a communications director you have to have a tech person you have mm -hmm. to have a mobilizer you have to have a community organizer you have to have a fundraiser you have to have mm -hmm. you know a strategy person all those different bits are extremely important and then you have to be unafraid of making mistakes mm -hmm. because it's from those mistakes that you grow and learn the the tough lessons you don't have to get it right every single time mm. but when you do make a mistake you have to be humble enough to acknowledge it to apologize if that's appropriate and to just keep going and learn from it and say you know what we don't lose in this game we win or we learn mm -hmm. well I mean I've, I've definitely taken a lot of your words to to heart because I've been very patient with my campaign I have yet to do a rally <laughs> in UMP we're also <clears> so yet to do a rally but we, we, we are going to come to that stay tuned R okay because I feel I should also be more driven because I literally haven't even driven yet to, to, <laughs> to, to UMP. UMP so that could be one of my mistakes but you know the thing that I really derive from UMP is you know out of a population of 30,000 people uh -huh. they can get about 50,000 votes and I, f <laughs> I feel that's a very passionate community so, yeah. so UMP stay tuned I'll be yeah. coming there soon Another thing I wanted to ask is, uh, you know, I'm on the Instagram, yeah? and uh, I follow you on the Instagram. Your Instagram is very different from your Twitter. Of I have two course. different personalities, eh? And it's different politics from my Facebook. on Twitter and bodybuilding Life. on Instagram. Yeah. So we see all this bodybuilding happening uh, on on Instagram. So are you campaigning to be a politician, or do you really want to be a bodybuilder? Huh? Hashtag Zim Ion Lady. So what I love about um, my Instagram and the way I've sort of segmented my social media, so Facebook I use for blogging, Twitter I use for, you know, quick political quick fights, quote, quote, <laughs> tours, quote, quote, quotable quotes, <laughs> quotable quotes Controllable and, trolls. you know, engaging. It's, I like the speed of Twitter. It's really quick and it moves mm. and, you know, it's very, very engaging. Um, but then what Instagram offers is just perhaps a window into my life because mm. politics is not my entire life a window into your uh, eating habits <laughs> and your fitness regime my fitness Proceed. regime my home my friends mm. um so i absolutely love it and i love the routine i have i, I do think it's important to stay healthy mm -hmm. the minute you hit 30 you actually have to start you know be being extremely deliberate about your health i like that you know in the morning it makes me energized makes me focused i make sure i'm hydrated mm -hmm. and i think um training working out lifting um lifting weights by the way uh, i think it's just a great uh, metaphor for life discipline hard work pay you know push your boundaries mm -hmm. keep going one more rep you know don't stop um, seek help if you need it. Seek a spotter. So pay your gym fees. Pay your gym fees. <laughs> that's a good slogan. Also. So yeah, that's the the Instagram, and I love the play on the words. Cheesy, I know, but still cool. Zim Iron Lady, get it? See what I did there? <laughs> so yeah. Hey, it's funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what have been the challenges running as a woman in a patriarchal country like ours? <laughs> First of all, are you married? <laughs> That was going to be my next question. <laughs> you get it on your Twitter feed all yeah, the time. All How the do you time. respond and to you know that what? BS? It's, it's, right. really, it's really funny, first of all, mm. because, you know, you, you say to yourself, team, you know, let's get together. Let's do this great manifesto. Let's mm. go out into the community. Let's find out what people want. You know, let's get our editors to look at it. Let's do this, that. And you post it up. Literally, the first comment is, are you married? Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't call it a challenge. It's an observation I make about the state of our, um, you know, society. The reason I don't look at it as a challenge per se, and I don't look at any of this as a challenge, is because um, while there are various obstacles to running as a woman or getting into the political or corporate space or legal space, really, mm -hmm. um, as a woman, for me, um, I choose not to be a victim about it. 
So if you ignore that, ignore it, ignore it. Over time, people will realize that, look, it doesn't actually matter if you're competent, if you're capable, if you're thorough, mm. if you deliver, the results often speak for themselves. And before you know it, people have forgotten that, oh gosh, she so happens to be a woman. A uh, PD junior says, get married, my sister. Time is moving. I pray for your wonderful wedding. Amen. Funny, not that mean. Grego says, too bad, you just lost my vote. Why would I vote for someone who just wants to take me thus far? What does that even mean? Then someone, ah, oh, Ka Karuswa says, you're seeking donations for this fund. So there's no teaching people to be self-sufficient. What will be the borrowings, what will be the borrowings used for, bad English, Consumers spending a 10% F extra cost. Jimbadzo is not anything new in Zim. It just put sick people into more debt or financial strain. I recommend that he watches uh, Nyasha's video on how Mkanda works because a bit of uh, misinformation there. Um, Kudzai Mutisi says, allergic to criticism as usual. You're a pseudo democrat. The praises heaped on you have finally gotten to your head. Calm down and stop the unhinged name calling. <laughs> Thanks, Kazai. I'll take that on board. Vote Dr. Nkosana says, Ah, Makava Kure advocate, but you got your rite of passage. You're not yet a factor in African politics until you get arrested for no reason whatsoever. Wink, wink, wink. Uh, pardon Chiwara says advocate we want politicians who don't tell lies where are you getting the $329 and is it basic or net so he asks the question he doesn't know the answer to still calls it a lie got it from the placard the doctor's placard but Zai, what's your vision for Mount Pleasant and for Zimbabwe so I'll start with Mount Pleasant constituency um, you know, I would love to see a Mount Pleasant, firstly, where the people are filled with hope, where the public officials are accountable, and where development just rings supreme. In other words, that, you know, you go to a shopping center today and a year later, it's developed, it's improved, it's cleaner. You know, you've got more shops, you've got more business. You know, we want to integrate the, the, the university students, especially into the rest of the constituency and make it a, a student constituency. So mm -hmm. have lots of cafes, bars, you know, it's, you know, bustling in that sense. Cafes and bars, we're fully <laughs> Proceed. We, we also want to ensure that the gap between those who have and those who don't have as much is reduced. In other words, where the community participates in a big way and helps Helping those that aren't as weak as those who are strong. So making sure that our government schools are well resourced, making sure that our public communities, our pool, our library, our community hall are well taken care of and that it's greener, that our waste management um, habits and behavior are more responsible, that we care for the environment, that we plant more trees, that it's more aesthetically appealing mm -hmm. you know no litter lying around no rubbish no snakes <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um no snakes yeah all right we we do want it to be you know a model constituency for development we want tech to be everywhere you look we want 10 year olds to be coding mm -hmm. um we want you know even those who don't earn as much running their own small projects projects and being able to access markets far and wide we'd like mount pleasant constituency uh to be a special economic zone for tech Mm -hmm. and that all the tech companies come here and you know we drive all sorts of interesting things in collaboration with um, the computer science department of the University of Zimbabwe. We'd like um, lots of businesses to come here uh, and to enjoy you know the sunshine and the trees and to to really invest uh, in the constituency. We want public health facilities that are state of the art. We'd like to ensure that our clinic you know runs like a you know 24-hour emergency room that the maternity clinics we'd like for there to be no potholes on the roads mm -hmm. we'd like our public transport system to be a model for the entire nation efficient well organized respectful of commuters um, and you know 
available to use for everyone whether or not you've got a car we'd like uh, clean water coming out of the taps mm -hmm. and it not to be a thing that you think about we'd like every single street light in the constituency to function we'd like you know there to be uh, respect amongst neighbors and respect of neighbor laws and na neighbor rights mm -hmm. um, and we'd like to get people really getting involved we want kids to be you know riding their bikes out on the roads because there are no potholes and it's so safe mm -hmm. we'd like the crime rate to go down and uh, we'd like to have great relations between the community and our and our police force i could go on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just a window as for zimbabwe you know my my vision for zimbabwe is really value-based I'd like three values to permeate the Zimbabwe of the future. The first is one where freedom reigns supreme. There's respect for constitutional rights and people have the freedom not only to move around and exercise their civil liberties, but to innovate, to think. You know, if, if you ask me my ideology, I'm very libertarian. So I do believe in minimum, you know, government regulation and strangling and, you know, the government falling and just allowing people to flourish, young and old, black and white, male and female. Um, those with extra abilities, it must be inclusive. Um, then fairness, you know, you want people to feel like they're treated fairly, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's by the government, by business, by the banks, by each other. Fairness is a value that I think is important as we go into the new Zimbabwe. And then opportunity. I want people to be coming to Zimbabwe, whether it's Zimbabweans in the diaspora or, you know, people from other regions, because Zimbabwe is a land of opportunity mm -hmm. uh, where people, you know, can, where their dreams can come true and be realized, you know, where people can access educational opportunities, business opportunities, where entrepreneurs can thrive, you know, where if you've got an idea, this is the best place for it to be fertilized and for it to grow and to explode, you know, where those with small businesses can really scale them up and, you know, prosperity, that's, that's the Zimbabwe that I'd love and I have a vision for and I'm more than prepared to contribute to to creating mm -hmm. Dream Zimbabwe. <laughs> oh, so, Fatsai, I would like to thank you for being on the program. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for coming to our campaign office. We hope to see you again. Mm -hmm. We see you stick to your word also. The campaign office is painted yellow. It's the yellow campaign. It's yellow, it's Mount Pleasant, it's green, it's clean, it's safe. It's very Accessible. difficult to find. I couldn't find <laughs> no, it. No, don't say I got that. lost <laughs> trying to find well, it. That's for the police, really. Right, right, right. Yeah. Police, hit me yeah. up. I'll send you the, 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 the Google Maps. <laughs> I'll send you the pin location the via SMS. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us on the week. I've been Comrade Fatso. She's been Fatzai Mahere. This has been an undisclosed location. Thank you and foot sack.